I went through some uh, challenges in life, just like any other business person. I, my father passed away and, you know, had, had changes in business and everything else. And, and I thought it was really important to reach out and, and start looking at how do I make sure that I'm as resilient as possible with my mental health. <laughs> Mike, so many people, including myself, I mean, when I first started this, this road, this journey of entrepreneurship, balance, it didn't exist mm -hmm. in my life. I, I was speaking to somebody, a few people the other day on the podcast, actually, and we were talking about this exact subject, and I can remember suffering so much with, with sleeping issues mm -hmm. because you just, you just want to work. And in, when you're not working, it feels like you're, you're not being productive. And I mean, I suffered. I suffered with sleeping issues, and many other people suffer with all kinds of things related to not balancing out their life when they're a leader, when they're a CEO, when they're an entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur. What does balance mean to you in business, and, and how do you achieve that? Well, there's like – two different answers I would give for this. Now you say the word balance, it kind of actually triggers me to something else. I read a book, actually I, I worked with Dr. Hassan Khalili. I, I, mm -hmm. I went through some uh, challenges in life just like any other business person. I, my father passed away and you know had, had changes in business and everything else and, and I thought it was really important to reach out and, and start looking at how do I make sure that I'm as resilient as possible with my mental health. Mm -hmm. And what he showed me was something called a Khalili grid. And in the Khalili grid he has four different squares and it's health and it's work and it's recreation and then it's family friends and relationships and if I think back to that grid I was like really healthy at least in the physical health side of things yeah. and I was really ingrained in work and I didn't have any recreation and my friends and family were only related to if they fit into my work schedule and he yeah. forced me to sort of migrate towards the middle and what was really great about that was after our company was acquired um, I, I had a chance to embrace some of those hobbies more that I had sort of established while I was working, number one, and, and be able to have relationships that are starting from scratch and being like, now what do I do? Which would have been really tough to walk away from business if I had nothing else. And the other thing was I, I ended up getting a surgery that turned out really bad for me, an abdominal surgery wow. from an old sports injury, and I was laid off for about two years. And if I, wow. yeah, so I didn't have health all of a sudden, right? But I had better mental health and I had amazing friends and family relationships and a partner who was supportive and I had hobbies and I had sort of revamped the way I worked. And so for me, I was able to have balance because I was more in the center. So that house of cards doesn't fall down on this side, at least I had something to rely on. And I think that I would have been really vulnerable to that if I hadn't have sort of emphasized that. And that was hard to do when you're busy at work to try and prioritize things like recreation when you like, I've, I have proposals yeah. due, I've got deadlines. But I do think that's wildly important. And investing in yourself is never a bad investment. And the other thing I think that's really important is it goes back to that doing what you love. Like I was in yeah. Japan last year where the oldest people in the world live, particularly the oldest women in the world live in Okinawa. And they have a philosophy called Ikigai. And Ikigai says if you can do something you love, do something you're good at, do something the world needs, and do something you can get paid for, then you have literally found the meaning of life. And wow. you'll have no problem getting out of bed every day. You'll have no problem having work-life integration because it's no longer work. It's just life. And uh, that philosophy really resonated with me and when I look back at the times in my life that I was doing my best it was when I was satisfying those four things right and wow. and I think that's a that's an interesting lesson that you only get in retrospect you know it's so true I, I can relate to that as well like every business there's well if, if we're fortunate enough we love what we do and I mean we we both love what we do but there's elements of business where there's you know the paperwork and the proposals and that kind of thing and I don't know about you but I I don't like that stuff and it shows like it, it I can feel it. I can literally feel it. Like I have a home studio here and after a podcast or after a presentation on stage or whatever it may be, I, I feel energized mm. as tired as I am physically. I feel energized because I'm meeting amazing people or if it's after a podcast, like I just I feel I can take on the world. But if I'm doing something like a proposal or paperwork or a million emails or whatever it may be, my wife even notices that that energy shift. But when, we're, when we feel passionate about what we do, some, a spark goes off inside of us. And I just wish other people could kind of look at their job or their business life and kind of ignite that spark within them because I think it's, it's, it's fairly – and I don't want to sound cheesy, but it's fairly magical when you can get that in your life mm -hmm. from your work. Exactly. Or if you can't get it from your work for some reason, maybe you haven't found that thing that resonates you, having it from other things in life and not putting yeah. all your eggs in that basket and be like, my career isn't where I want it to be, therefore I'm miserable. Well, yeah. maybe your career is good, but your relationships can be amazing. Your recreation can be amazing. Yeah. Your health can be amazing. You can experience things and you can also find other ways of work. Work doesn't just have to be a career. 
Like you can do meaningful things with your energy that can help our community and give back to charity and donate your time. And that's another form of work that people don't think about. They only think about what they get paid for, and that's a job, but that's not work. Yeah.